Shalom is real. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. Alright, so uh, this just in, which this article actually came from, it was, I found that article through the spirit because I was just watching the uh, the elder Sakharan in his video he just did maybe two hours ago. If I ran one in nukes, America couldn't do anything about it. And he was, you know, they basically, this, uh, this uh, message or the statement was brought up. When um when the prime minister, I guess supreme minister of Iran, was speaking with the uh a, a ranking high ranking official of, of Japan, you know, and they were going into. And this statement was brought out, you know, along with many other statements, man, you know, so at the same at the very same time to where, you know, the Iranians were meeting up with the Japanese, this happened, man. All right, to where two tankers, two oil tankers. Two Japanese oil tankers were attacked. So it says, uh, you see two tankers damaged after torpedo attack near Straits of Hormuz. It says, it appears earlier reports that the front altar had sunk were in fact incorrect. The ship's captain has said that it is still afloat. VHF radio traffic confirmed that it is damaged but still afloat. Hours have passed since the suspected attacks. And still nobody has claimed responsibility. Iran's foreign minister, Javad Sarif, has noted how suspicious it is that a Japanese-owned vessel would be attacked while Iranian leaders were meeting with the Japanese prime minister in, Ty in Tehran. Yep, and you know, basically, America being the number one enemy is trying to make it seem as if Iran is the number one enemy. You know, and that's just, you know, basically... You know the the uh, the uh, I guess you want to call it the the bully of the whole earth. You know, is trying to like I say, he's trying to push it off as if he's uh as if he's you know, or he's sloppy. He's trying to direct the world's attention to Iran. All right, just what um, uh, maybe a month or so ago, you had it to where um supposedly Iran attacked two um American tankers in, in Saudi Arabia, man. I believe it was in Saudi Arabia, but around that area. All right, but we all we know it's uh, orchestrated, and they know it's orchestrated by America. So it says hours have passed since the, since the suspected attacks, and still nobody has claimed responsibility. Iran's foreign minister Javad Sarif has noted how suspicious it is that a Japanese-owned vessel would be attacked while Iranian leaders were meeting with the Japanese prime minister in Tehran. And as one BBG analyst pointed out. Fingers will certainly be pointed at Iran as the mastermind behind these events. But the potential benefits to the Persian Gulf nation are outweighed by the risk. And if Tehran isn't responsible, it will suffer the consequences. Several American warships were nearby when the attack unfolded per radio traffic, which also showed some signs of tensions with Iranian vessels. Okay. American warship identifying itself as coalition warship, stating they have multiplied vessels and aircraft in the vicinity. Multiple Salaki vessels and aircraft in the vicinity, Iranian Navy calling vessels asking their attention in the area. You know, and that, that makes me think of that they got the worldly saying, My enemy's enemy is my friend. You know? Because now you can use basically your enemy's enemy to take down uh for them basically to fight against each other, man. To take, you know, to basically make it easier for you. And that's what America is doing right now. It says, meanwhile, the first reported photos of the deck of the front altar have surfaced online. And it certainly looks like the ship was hit by a torpedo-like projectile. Okay, so this was intentional. The front altar, the Marshall Islands flag tanker, damaged in Thursday's attacks has now sunk according to Iranian uh, television. Later, others denied these reports. It says, if accurate, the sinking could have a serious impact on oil prices in the environment as the ship contained twice the amount of oil as Exxon Valdez. While some sources cited torpedoes as the weapons used in the attack, 
Another said officials suspected the use of a magnetic mine similar to the devices used, used during the last month's attacks. You know? So, hey, man, um, hey, that's why we call this man the devil. All right? And these other nations see it, man. You know, these other nations see it. All right? And um, I had seen something. I wonder if it's still up here. Let me see. Oh, right here. It says, uh, Middle East torpedo attack sent oil prices soaring. It says oil prices surge early on Thursday, which is today the, what's it, today the 13th? Thursday the 13th, June 13th, 2019. Oil prices surge early on Thursday after two oil tankers were, were reported to have been hit by explosions in the Gulf of Oman between Iran and the United Arab Emirates a month after a previous incident in Middle Eastern waters. Okay. So, hey, man, it's about to get bad, you know. That's why uh, wars, you know, that's like, hey, wars are very uh, detrimental to a society, man. You know, wars are very detrimental to, to a society. And the ones who feel it most, all right, like you have the tariff war. All right, who's going to feel it most? The people of that, uh, with tariff wars, the, the ones who feel it most is who? You know, the everyday uh, citizens, man, of that particular country that's in that war. All right, or just like World War One and World War Two, man. You know, when you look up to the statistics, guess uh, they said it was actually more uh, civilians that died during um, World War Two than those that were actually at war. All right, and this, hey, guess who's going to feel it? All right, those who have to go to work every day to, uh, you know, make ends meet for their family. All right, truckers, which hey, if the oil prices go up, hey, truckers is going to be more for um for truckers to get the products from one place to another, which means it's going to be more for, uh, you know, these grocery stores to receive the product, which means it's going to be more for the consumer to buy the products out of the grocery stores. You know, you know, so once Babylon goes down, it's, it's a, a relief for everybody. OK, and this is a World War Three update, man, because all these nations like we always go into Joel, the third chapter, Joel, the second chapter. All right. All these nations. All right. Are going to meet in a, in, in, in a volley of decision. All right. In a volley of decision, which is in that area, man, in the land of the Middle East. All right. You know. The scriptures actually say, even in Revelations, let me just grab that. I think it was Revelations, uh, let me see. Because you got. No, no, come on, man. Got it. So this is Revelations 9 and 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. All right. And when you look into where's the great river Euphrates. Look at that, man. This is where the Great River Euphrates is, man. All right. You know? So around this area to where, all right, this is, you got the Persian Gulf. Like I was saying, that's where, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is happening as far as the oil uh, prices go with Iran and the wars, basically. The uh, proxy wars with Iran and the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the attacks of the oil ships or whatever. All right. So that's what we, you know, see in the Middle East area. They see in Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia. 
All these nations are going to come together and meet up in this place. All right. Which is known as the Valley of Decision. All right. So this is a, uh, a prelude to World War Three, man. You know, this is a prelude to World War Three, man. So, hey, man, like the elder, um, you know, the elder Monatizak said, hey, it's even time to be even more, you know, basically to basically be even more. Damn, I was just watching. What's the. Let me grab it real quick. Take heed even more because the days are even closer, man. The days are even closer. All right. So, um, I was going to get some scriptures on troublemakers, too, because Esau Edom is a, is a troublemaker, man. You know, Esau Edom, who the world calls the Caucasian, man. Is a tr are, are troublemakers, man. You know, pushing out, um, you know, if basically, you know, being the biggest bullies on the planet Earth, bullying everybody, and if you choose not to go their way, they gonna make life difficult for you, man. You know. And it's hey, the scriptures uh wholeheartedly speak against that, man. All right. So this is Proverbs sixteen and twenty eight. A dishonest man spread it spreads strife, and a whisper separates close friends. A man of violence entices his neighbors, and leads him in a way that is not good. All right, and what's that way that's not good? You know, making your uh, friends your enemies, man. Whoever, whoever winks his eye plans dishonest things. He who pursues his lips brings evil to pass. And that's America in a nutshell, man. And the scriptures say, when you are, uh, that was Proverbs 16, but when you read in actually Proverbs 6, it says, there, 6 and 16, it says, there are 16 that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and heads that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides of wicked plans, and feet that make haste to run to evil. All right, a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord amongst brothers. You know, hey man, so you know, this day, hey, Esau Edom's day is coming, man. And going back as as I was, you know, saying before, is that this is why World War Three is so important. And even though it's gonna come, you know, with great pains, as the scriptures uh, call that day, like a uh, um, as a woman in travail. You know, it's going to come with great pains, man. All right. But when that baby comes, when your house shot comes, life comes, if you will. All right. Then all is forgiven. All is forgotten about, man. You know, hey, so with that, you know, hey, keep your eyes, like, you know, keep your eyes over there in that, uh, you know, over there in the, um, the streets of Hormuz, man. All right. Shalom.